Existing templates may be ones that you already use throughout your business um, on a daily basis, letters that you open up and manually edit, save into the new property file. Those are what you can use to create existing templates within the system or use to edit in the system to create a template. You start this method the same way as you do creating a new template by clicking the new template button down at the bottom. Again, we're going to choose a Word document and give it a description. And the template type of vendor. Clicking next on the edit Word template box. Again, we've got the option to add any notes, create a task or assign an email template. You will note once again, we do not have the ability to open the template and that's because we haven't assigned one yet. So we are going to open up the merge codes. I'm also going to open up a document as well. So this is our template that we use. Well, this is the letter that we use to create letters when we're using them within, uh, within outside of Expert Agent. So I'm just opening up the letter. Now, as you can see, it is just a standard letter. It's not a template because it doesn't have any of the merge codes in it. But we're going to think now about editing this letter to create a template to use as letters within Expert Agent. So the first thing you may want to think about is inserting some branding. And this may be because you don't want to have to print each letter out from Expert Agent to scan it back onto your header paper, to scan it back in, to send us an email. You want to be able to email it directly from Expert Agent with your logo on it. So I'm going to add this, my logo in as a header within Word. So double clicking at the very top of Word is going to open up the header. I'm then going to go to insert and select pictures. I'm then going to find my logo and click insert and that's inserted it into the header. The first thing I'm going to do, anything that uh, text boxes or images that I insert into Word documents, be that a brochure template or a letter template, I need to make sure that it is wrapped in front of text. All right. That means it can move wherever you want to move it. I'm also going to hold down the control key on my keyboard. Hover over one of these corner buttons that gives me that double headed arrow there and click and drag to move it in. And that moves all four corners in at once. I can then click and drag to move it wherever I want it. Now I've got the alignment guides turned on within Word, which means when the middle of the image is in the middle of the page, I get that green line down the middle there. I can turn those on by going to Page Layout in Word and selecting Align from the right hand side and selecting Use Alignment Guides. Double clicking out of the header, we'll close the header and our logo is now inserted and if we go onto a second page, you can see the logo is pulled through for me. Next, I'm going to start thinking about text merge codes. So the first one merge code here is our reference. So I'm going to highlight that and move over into the merge code panel, which is floating. I can have it wherever I need it to be. Now our reference is a property reference, therefore it is property specific. Therefore, I'm going to assume it's under the property code section of the merge code panel. Clicking on the little black triangle will open up the merge codes for property codes and I can scroll down, it's in alphabetical order, and select reference. Now we saw this very briefly in the last section, but just to show you in a little bit more detail, using Chrome it's a single left click of the mouse to copy the merge code. Up into the top that will open this box here where we hover over the mouse right click and select copy. Moving our mouse over it back into the Word document, we've got that reference highlighted now. So we could right click and paste on our mouse or we can use the keyboard shortcut of Control V for Victor and that pastes the merge code into the Word document. 
The next one down here is date. Now date is not property specific. So over into the merge code panel, I'm going to close down property codes. Date is a general code. So opening up the general codes and at the top there, helpfully, we've got today's date. So left click, up to the top, right click, copy, and then back into, X, uh, into Word and control V to paste. Close down general codes and scrolling up to property codes again because we're now looking at the vendor details. You can of course obviously just delete the information in there and paste in the merge codes as and when. So that was our vendor details and we're going to be using vendor one. So opening up the vendor one name, address and contact details and from the list here selecting the merge code here of vendor one title initial and surname. Left click, right click, copy into the document and paste. Now we next we need to have in there his address or the vendor's address. What we've got on this list here is county, district, house name and number, postcode, street and town. Or up at the top we've got address line 1 down to 7. Either use these ones or these ones. Do not mix and match. Do not use house name and number and then address line 2 or address line 1 and then street. It will not work. It will break the merge codes. I'm just going to use the ones at the top just because I find it easier and I know which order they go in. Clicking on address line 1, right click, copy into the document and paste and do the same with address line 2 so left click right click copy into the document and paste now I'm always using the keyboard shortcut of control V but you can of course use right click and paste so number 4 here left click right click copy into the document and paste. Now you may think that's enough because the vendor had four lines in his address. It's not enough. Always use too many rather than not enough with things like uh, address lines and when later on when we're going to look at templates for your brochures you'll see it's the same with room details as well. So always use too many rather than not enough. So we're now going to insert number five. Number six, left click, right click, copy into the document and paste. And number seven, left click, right click, copy into the document and paste. And always use the vendor details here, not the property details. It may be the same, it may not be the same. And on the off chance that it's not the same, you do not want to be sending this letter to the wrong address. So always use the vendor details. Next, we've got our vendor salutation. So scrolling down in the vendor contact details to salutation. So it's a left click, right click, copy into the document and paste. Next here, we have got our address, a property address, but it's in one line. So closing down the vendor one name, address and contact details and selecting from the list under property codes address in one line. Left click, right click, copy into the document and paste. Now what we can do is make any standard formatting changes to this. So highlighting all of it, I'm going to underline it as well. It's bold already, but I'm going to underline it as well. We're also going to click onto this little box here and there's a tiny box with an arrow and when you hover over it you get this pop-up. Clicking on that it's the advanced options for the font. We're going to select the tick box here for all capitals and OK. 
and that will change the merge code into capitals, which means any text that it brings through in that merge code will be in capital letters. Next here is our property price. You do not need to leave the currency symbol in there. The system will bring that through for you. So deleting the price and scrolling down in property text to price. <clears throat> Left click, right click, copy into the document and paste. Now we do not need this text. It was just standard text or, or individual text for that particular letter that we created at the beginning. So I'm going to delete that. We don't need it on every single letter. Scrolling down to the bottom, we have got here our negotiator details. Now there's two options here. You can either have negotiator that is set as the property negotiator. So if my colleague Barbara was set as the property negotiator, but I was creating the letter, that would come from Barbara. Or underneath general codes, you've got the option for negotiator underneath here, which would mean whoever was creating the letter, the la that letter would come from them. So despite the fact that Barbara is set as the property negotiator, that letter would come from me. So left click, right click, copy into the document and paste. Down at the bottom, double clicking at the very bottom of the page to open up the footer, you can add in your footer information. And you can do that by using the branch merge codes. If you are a single branch firm though, I wouldn't use the branch merge codes, I would always just write it in as standard text. If you're a multi-branch firm and you are sharing your templates across branches, then use these branch details and that letter will come from whichever branch created the letter. So I'm just gonna standard type it in here. Okay, and that is our completed letter. So we've got our logos in there, we've got all of the merge codes that we need, and our footer down at the bottom. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and save onto our desktop. Press the Save button, and close down Word. Close down the merge code panel as well. Click on the select button and upload your existing template that you've just edited to make into an expert agent template and open and save. You have now got your cloned, your new and your existing templates on your R letters tab.